Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is an introduction to stamp collecting. And I realize that's not a really popular hobby nowadays. It used to be a very, very popular thing. But um, I, I collected stamps many years ago, and I've past few years I've returned to it and really enjoying it. And we're going to go over a few things when it comes to stamp collecting, like how do you do it, where can you get stamps, and there are different aspects to it. That, that I really like, such as there's the collecting of it, there is also the identifying of stamps, which is an art unto itself. Then here's a quick look at my one of my collections of stamps. This is a United States uh, stamps. And uh, you know, stamps are do have a very long history, and there's some interesting things, like right here, see something wrong with this stamp? The airplane is upside down. In 1918, the post office accidentally released 100 of these stamps called the Inverted Jenny. Now, if you get one, it's worth upwards of a million dollars. Chances are you won't get one, though. Okay, so first off, how can you get stamps? There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can buy them from Amazon or from eBay. Um, you can check out Craigslist. Uh, you can get used stamps. You can get new stamps. And one big thing to do is to talk to people and ask people. Ask your family members, you know. Chances are very good that somebody somewhere along in your family had a stamp collection and it's in an attic somewhere or in a closet somewhere and forgotten about. And you can grab a hold of those stamps. Um, you can get them from letters. And uh, even though people don't write letters anymore, which I think means stamps are going to become more valuable because we're using less and less stamps thanks to email and the internet. So stamp collections are going to come back around again, I think. And, but uh, there's a lot of different ways you can get them. So talk to people. And that's a big thing. I get thousands of stamps by talking to people. And if you do get them on letters like this, very easy to get the stamp off the envelope by just soaking them in water. And the post office works with stamp collectors very closely to make sure the glue is water soluble. So you can soak it for a few minutes and then the stamp comes right off and then it's you let it dry and you can put it in your collection. So let's take a look at the different ways you can collect stamps. Uh, by by collecting I mean organizing them. Like you can buy a set of albums like that like I have here. This three set covers all the United States stamps up until I think nineteen uh, two thousand and thirteen. Uh, 2013 and every year they put out a supplement so you can keep up to date and it's actually rather inexpensive to buy a set like that that's every stamp and, or you can buy a smaller album like this that covers the major stamps for or just about any country if you don't want to invest in an album to start out with you know you can just use a shoe box use some kind of a little box keep things in envelopes and you can still enjoy your stamp collection you can even make up an album on your own uh, or you can get something like this called a stock book, which I really like because I have specialty collections like uh, castles are one of my specialty collections. Stamps all about castles, and I keep that in a stock book. See, these are different stamps from castles of the world, from all around the world. Of course, you know, you know, if you follow my YouTube channel or visit my website, you know I love castles. So of course I have a castle stamp collection, and there are uh, thousands of them, tens of thousands of castle stamps, because castles are um, an interesting thing. But there's all kinds of subjects, you know, from butterflies to cats to astronomy and space and scientists and all kinds of different stamps. You can collect a specialty that's called topical collecting, because it goes by topic. Another way you can collect stamps is to keep them in something called stock pages. See, that's a three-ring binder, and you keep your... your um, your stamps and these neat little rows under plastic so they're protected but you can still see them. So how do you get your stamps in an album? Um, there's a couple of different ways. This is called a, a stamp mount and it has adhesive on the on the black side of it there. But you put the stamp in the mount like that and you wet it lightly and it has some adhesive on it and then you stick that in the album and this is a really nice way to, to um, keep the stamps for display 
see how it looks really everything looks really nice and you can you know lift it up take a look take the stamp out if you want to show it to somebody you want to take a look at the back of it or something like that but a little bit more expensive way to do it but for finer stamps um, it's a good option or for just a fun stamp collection or used stamps you can use something called a stamp hinge it's a little cellophane piece that has an adhesive on it and you wet the back of it and then you stick it to the back of the stamp at the top like this and you just use a little bit of water just wet it a little bit you want to damage the stamp as little as possible well you don't want to damage the stamp at all and then you wet that hinge and you place that in the book right and so then once it dries you can lift it up and look at the back of it and or examine the picture under the under the stamp So you like this, you can lift it and see. You can check out the back of the stamp. So there's a little few different ways about collect, things about collecting, but let's talk about identifying stamps. That's a big deal when it comes to stamp collecting. Like for instance, look at these two stamps. They look pretty similar, a little bit different shade and color, right? But they're actually very different stamps put out in very different years. And this is what stamp collectors do, identify stamps by all these little characteristics. See the Statue of Liberty? Notice the torch she's carrying. In this stamp, the torch is behind the words, and in this picture, the torch is between the words U.S. and postage. So those are two different stamps. So you'd put them in a different spot on your album. And in the 1860s and 1870s, people were soaking stamps off of their envelopes, washing them, and reusing them. And that's fraud. So they came up with this technique called grilling a stamp, where they put a series of perforations on them. So if people tried to get them off the envelope, they would tear and be no good. So those are grilled stamps, and I also collect them too. I really like those. But that was a method of uh, stopping fraud. They don't do that anymore. But the grilled stamps, I have a collection of grilled stamps. I, 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 love, my, I love those stamps. They're a little bit more pricey, a little bit more difficult to come by. Another thing to prevent um, counterfeiting of stamps is the post office actually puts something called a watermark on the back of us on the back of us sheets of stamps and this is like a secret mark so you can tell the difference between a real stamp and a counterfeit stamp now watch this put a little fluid on there and what happens can you see that letter i it's actually a letter p but there i show you the i if you can see the p and uh, so that's the watermark and this one has a part of an s on it See it come right out like that? Secret watermark. That way you know this is an authentic snap and not a counterfeit snap. But so there's a lot of, a lot of things like that. You know, stamp collecting is about collecting. It's also about identifying, figuring out what stamp is what, and then um, organizing in your collection. I mean, I love it. Let's, um, we'll end this off with um, a look at my castle stamp collection, just a little bit, because I do, you know, if you have a subject that you love, um, you, sh you might want to, and you're thinking about stamp collecting, you can always just start yourself a topical collection based around that subject, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, co countries all around the world put out stamps based on all kinds of, all kinds of subjects. And, and some of the stump stamps are just absolutely beautiful. And like I said, you know, um, stamps are disappearing because we don't write letters anymore and we don't, you know, mail bills and stuff like that. You know, and so I, I think it'd be interesting to have an actual stamp collection. Um, on my website, you probably don't know about it, I don't talk about it much, but I have a whole section devoted to stamp collecting. How you do it, how you do watermarking, albums, all these subjects that I, all these topics that I covered, um, you can learn more about it. See, there's a, a few stamps, let me see, once, these are from Great Britain, and that one's from Germany, see that in a beautiful castle. This one's another one. See the castle on the top of the hill there? So that's it. Have fun. More videos coming.